This is the Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief, keeping you informed about the happenings in Annapolis and the area. Local news, local sports, local events, local opinion, and of course, local weather. The Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief starts now. Good morning. It's Monday, May 20th, 2019. This is John Frenet, and this is your Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief. Last week, Dewan Gay was running for alderman in Ward 6 special election, and on Thursday night, he found out that he's not. According to Gay, the city has disqualified his candidacy based on the absence of one signature on his certificate of candidacy. That missing signature was his campaign treasurer. Gay did tell us that he turned the certificate in on Monday, May 13th. It was accepted, but he was notified on Thursday evening, May 16th, that the form would not be accepted and his name would not be on the primary ballot. We reached out a couple times to City Clerk Regina Watkins Eldridge, and our phone calls were not returned at this point. So we have no real answer from the city as to why this was disqualified, and we're going on Gay's word there. We did talk to a former elected official who said, usually when you turn in the form, be it a campaign finance report or other election form, the clerk's office will review it for completeness prior to stamping the received date and time on it. Gay did say he tried to appeal the decision earlier on Friday, but he didn't get very far. He plans to continue that appeal today. He feels confident that it may be reconsidered, but he did say that if not, he is fully prepared to mount a vigorous write-in campaign for the general election, which will be on July 2nd. More election shenanigans here in Annapolis. The Annapolis Police Department is investigating two incidents where gunshots rang out into two separate communities. The first was in the 1100 block of Madison Street at about 7.45 p.m. And this is in Hacka's owned Eastport Terrace community. When police arrived, they did not find any victims or suspects. And about three hours later, just before 11 p.m., police received numerous calls for a series of shots fired from numerous communities. Police did respond to all of those communities, but believe that the shots originated in the 1300 block of Tyler Avenue, which is in the Hackam managed Robinwood community. Again, like the incident earlier, no victims or suspects were located. In more Hacka news, at about 1.50 a.m. on Sunday morning, the Annapolis Police Department responded to the 1400 block of Tyler Avenue. This is in the Robinwood community owned by Hacka. They were responding to a report of shots fired when they arrived. They found two adult males suffering from gunshot wounds. It was a 31-year-old male from Arnold and a 48-year-old male from Severn. They were treated to an area hospital for treatment with what is believed to be non-life-threatening injuries. Detectives are investigating and they do ask if If anybody has any information to contact them, the number is 410-268-3439. I'll have more about this hack of business in an opinion piece. Some may call it a rant a little bit later on in this podcast, so you want to make sure you check that out. Over in Anne Arundel County, back on January 22nd, they got a tip from the NCMEC, which is the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, about child pornography. On April 5th, they obtained a search and seizure warrant in the 8,000 block of Wayne Road in Severn, Maryland, and identified a suspect, Nicholas Benjamin Hiddle, a 39-year-old male. They seized several electronic items and sent them out for a forensic examination, and it did come out to corroborate the tip. Hiddle is currently a Maryland Tier 2 sex offender, and when police were interviewing him, he did admit that he did not disclose his place of his employment, his email address, or his social media accounts, which are required for a Tier 2 sex offender, and he was also charged with Maryland registry violations. They did arrest him on May 16th. He was located at his home. He was charged with three counts of possession of child pornography, as well as violations of the Maryland registry. In a nearly identical report on December 4th, Anne Arundel County Police again received another tip from the NCMEC. After investigation, they identified a suspect, Christopher John Edwards, 26 of the 300 block of Baldwin Road in Odenton. They seized several electronic items, were able to collaborate the tip, and on May 17th, Edwards was located at his address and taken into custody. Anne Arundel County Police is urging anybody with any information on either of these incidents or the suspects to contact the Child Abuse Unit at 410 222-4733. The Preakness was this weekend, and War of Will won the 144th running of the Preakness. He was a long shot at 6-1, to one, the third choice at post time, and he ended up winning that pretty handily by one and a quarter length. So congratulations to War of Will, but by no means was that the main story coming out of the Preakness. Right at the beginning, Boat Express bucked in the starting gate and dumped his rider. 
You would think it would be over, but Boat Express had other ideas, and he decided he wanted to run the race alone. He did that. He was never corralled until the end of the race, and the outrider that captured him said that he was just playing games. Now, with a weird decision on who won the Kentucky Derby, a riderless horse competing in the Preakness, one wonders what bizarre things are going to come out on June 8th at the Belmont Stakes in Belmont, New York. All right, that does wrap it up for the news today. Please make sure you're checking out ionanapolis.net throughout the day because we do update it throughout the day. We never know what's coming down the pike. You want to hang tight because I do have that rant about crime and hacka here in the city of Annapolis coming up in a little bit. We also have George Young with your local DMV weather forecast, and he's coming up right after this brief message about MacMedics. Have you ever been to the Annapolis Mall when it opens for the day? Maybe you've noticed the line of folks waiting to get into the Apple Store. As you may know, I'm a Mac user, and today's episode of the Daily News Brief, in fact, all of the episodes of the Daily News Brief, have been produced right here on my Mac computer. What you might not know about is MacMedics. They were founded here in Annapolis in 1989, and they are an Apple-authorized premium service provider, the only one in the Baltimore, Annapolis, D.C. area. And what that means to you is that they repair all Apple devices, including the iPhone screens and batteries, all without an appointment. And most repairs are done the same day usually within two hours. They also sell everything except the iPhone and the watch for the same price as Apple. I don't know why you would go anywhere else. Give them a call at 410-757-MACS, or if you're not into the whole letter thing, 410-757-6227. Stop by their retail store in Severna Park on Benfield Road or their service center in Lanham, right off of Route 50. Or you can always check them out online at macmedics.com. I'll tell you, they've saved me quite a few times, and I know they can save you. Going out? You need the most up-to-date local weather. Here's George Young from DMV Weather in Annapolis with today's forecast. Hey everyone, this is George with DMV Weather, and this is your Eye on Annapolis forecast for Monday, May 20th. After a nice weekend, it'll be a nice week ahead. On the whole, with a ton of sunshine and warm temps across the region, look for today's highs to be in the upper 80s to maybe even lower 90s in spots, with a chance of showers and some thunderstorms as a cold front moves through the region, which will set the stage for spectacular weather Tuesday and Wednesday with blue skies and temps in the 70s, and that should make for ideal conditions for the Blue Angels practice session on Tuesday and the actual air show on Wednesday. Then temps will warm back up Thursday through the weekend with 80s to maybe 90s in spots with tons of sunshine and a small chance for some PM thunderstorms Thursday and Friday before a great summer-like Memorial Day weekend. Okay, that's it for today. This is George Young of DMV Weather. Make it a great day out there. Be sure to get our free app on all of your devices by searching for DCMDVA Weather in the Apple or Google App Stores and also follow us on Facebook and Twitter and on our website at dmvweather.com so you can always stay weather-informed. I'm Annapolis City Mayor Gavin Buckley. May 17th to the 24th is commissioning week. We have lots of -of out-of-town visitors. There's going to be increased traffic and lots of people who don't know their way around the city. Be patient. Be kind. There will be road closures. Give yourself extra time. This is a big event for these families and it's such a big part of our identity. The restaurants, the hotels, the shops rely on increased revenue at this time. So thank you for your support. We love this event every year, and let's go Navy. So many different stories in the news, and everyone has an opinion. Here's ours. Since Thursday, the Annapolis Police Department has investigated two calls for shots fired, and most recently, just yesterday, two men were shot in the Robin Wood community. We have a crime problem. Is it that much different than any other jurisdiction? Probably not. But most of us can agree that less crime would be nice, right? Public housing tends to float to the surface in any discussion of crime in Annapolis. And yes, many that cause the crime come from outside of those communities. But there are some bad apples in there. And for whatever reason, the criminals feel safe in the public housing communities. We have established the Eastport Working Together group, which is a great start, but it needs more involvement. Much of the group is made up of wealthy white people who are concerned about their property values. Very few of the group are residents of the public housing where the issues tend to happen. So step one in making a real dent in the crime problem in Annapolis is to get more buy-in from the residents. And I get that some will resist because, well, they like it that way. It's a perfect setting to deal drugs and guns. But we need more involvement from those in the community that want to see change. A second step, and this is a huge one, 
is HACA itself, or the Housing Authority for the City of Annapolis. The management of this organization has been piss poor at best for decades. The best thing they can do is start enforcing their own rules and maybe create some new ones. Only when there are consequences for bad actors will you see behavioral changes. They have a banning list. Use it. You fall behind on your rent? Begin eviction, just like any other apartment in Maryland. You don't have a parking sticker on your car? Tow it. Convicted of a felony? Goodbye. Got a felony on your record? You need to wait two years to apply for housing. Not maintaining the home? You issue a warning and then you begin eviction proceedings. Convicted of a felony on the property? Gone forever. Make it a bad place to do bad stuff. Looking the other direction and cashing that paycheck is the easy part of the job. It's time for Hacker to do some of the hard work. And of course, the third aspect of meaningful change is the police enforcement. Laws are laws. Let's enforce them. All of them. Littering, jaywalking, those California stops I tend to be fond of. No warnings. The laws were broken. Issue the tickets. A fight breaks out, and if it's not resolved by the time the police roll up, expect assault charges and a ride to the police station in the back of a cruiser. Dealing drugs? Expect to be arrested. Got a gun that's not registered or without a carry permit? Here's your ticket to Jennifer Road. Once it becomes evident that public housing is not a place to break the law, behavior will change. And finally, the last aspect is judicial. We have laws on the books and sentencing guidelines. Anne Arundel County judges for years were known as the lenient ones. Drug deals from Prince George's County came across county lines just in case they got caught because it was easier to get off in Anne Arundel County. It is getting better, but it still needs a lot of work. Prosecution needs to be relentless and judges need to stop giving people breaks. I have discussed this with many people, and one of the main objections is that such an iron fist will create homelessness. Well, yes, it likely will, but only among a crowd that is using public housing for illegal activities. There is a waiting list of people that would love to have a roof over their heads. So yes, we might be swapping one homeless segment for another, but once you begin to fill HACA properties with people that appreciate the leg up and the opportunity to have a home, behavior will change. And I don't mean to pick on public housing, but that's where much of the crime is focused. But this low to no tolerance policy should also be extended everywhere in the city. You get into a drunken bar brawl on Main Street, expect assault and public intoxication charges. Make it known that Annapolis is a great town, but also make it known that it's not one for lawbreakers. And that's what I'm thinking today. There is a diamond of diamonds. It's from De Beers. Only 14 diamond tears in the world can touch them. Its name, Forevermark. And Zachary's is the only jeweler in the Annapolis area that has it. Not only is it beautiful and rare, it has a story, supporting women in diamond-producing areas around the world. So when you give a Forevermark diamond, you don't just give, you give back. Zachary's and Forevermark, a jeweler and a jewel. Online at Zachary'sJewelers.com. You've been listening to the Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief. Tell your friends and colleagues this is the podcast where you can keep up on the latest with what's going on in Annapolis. And also tell them about our website, ionannapolis.net, where you can find even more information. This podcast comes to you every Monday through Friday at 7 a.m., keeping you informed with the Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief. And take a moment to listen to our other podcast, The Maryland Crabs, released every Thursday at noon.